This is Twit. Let's do some brown liquor. What do you say? Would you like to? Because yeah. I, you know, I, I am in Australia. Uh, this was like actually a gift um, when a, a friend of mine in the area is like, hey, I got this for you. And so this is the Starward, uh, particularly their Pedro Jimenez cask, uh, uh, which is interesting because it's not actually bottled by directly by Starward per se. Starward is kind of a funny distillery, as many of these sort of new world distilleries are. Uh, it started in uh, 2009 in the Melbourne area. It's the uh, state of Victoria in Australia. That's kind of a dry, warm southern part of, uh, of Australia. Big wine country uh, in there. That's where the Barossa Valley is and the Yarra uh, make excellent wines in that part of the world. Uh, got off to a slow start in 2009. Small distillery trying to make their way until they got an investment in 2015 by an organization known as Distill Ventures out of the UK. Distill Ventures is a wholly owned subsidiary of a company you may have heard of called Diageo. The largest liquor entity on this planet owns a non-trivial, they own Johnny Walker and a non-trivial number of the Scottish distilleries, and they encourage them to go in a particular direction. Uh, one of the thing, the, the fellow behind it, a guy named David Vitale, uh, was beer maker first. And so he has stuck to his beer roots a little bit where they use both, you know, beer and distilling yeast and a darker malt. So it's quite a strong grain flavor, which is interesting to me, uh, rather than just sticking with the very mild barley approach that most people do. And uh, small still set up, uh, 1800 liter uh, wash still, 600 liter spirit still. Because of how hot it is in the, the Melbourne area, they actually have additional cooling jackets and things to keep the distillation process under control so they don't overheat. And then they are, because they're in the wine region, they actually age in wine casks. So these are uh, bought from Yolumba and Penfolds, Wolf Blast, those kinds of wineries, which are all in that area nearby. Uh, often they're, they, those are typically French and American oak casks that have already had wine in them for five, six, seven, eight years. The, when the wine is drained, the barrels are, while still wet, are sold to the distillery and the distillery then will put the whiskey into it for at least two years. That's the requirement for Australia to be called a whiskey, but they go a little longer, sometimes three or four years. And in this particular case for this edition, they then finish it in a sherry cask into your proper uh, Spanish sherry casks. Uh, that's not that strange. You know, sherry is wine, just it's been fortified with bar, uh, with uh, brandy before it's barreled. Obviously, you don't spend a lot of time in barrels around here. That's because it's too warm and too dry. You know, the aging process for whiskey uh, is really about sort of the respiration of the barrel. that the, the, the contents warms up and pushes into the wood and cools down and pulls out. Uh, and when you have humidities as low as you have in that part of the world, you actually lose water faster. You lose alcohol. So the alcohol rate tends to rise in, a, in this part of the world over time, as opposed to in Scotland where the alcohol rate would fall. So they tend to barrel lower level where we're up in Scotland. You'd come in at 65, 68, even 70%. They're coming in around 55 or so, but they still cut with water. These are all 48%, which is a respectable uh, alcohol level for a whiskey. This particular edition is not directly bottled by Starward. You can't buy this from Starward. This actually comes from a group called the Whiskey Club. So you subscribe to the Whiskey Club and they request custom bottlings for, from Starward and you can then buy it through them. This one was 140 Australian dollars, about 90 US and I'm afraid only in Australia. So uh, it's been good fun to drink. There's not much left. I believe I got this yesterday. Uh, maybe the day before. So I've been sharing it with friends. Um, it is a little heady. It's quite fruity. The wine is definitely there. Uh, it is also quite a young whiskey. So, you know, it tastes and drinks very much like a new world whiskey. This is not your old Dalmar 18 by any stretch of imagination. And for $90, you know, it's fun, but pricey. Or what it is? Is it like a That's like a bourbon kind of a thing? It's a jammy fruit bomb of a whiskey. A jammy. <laughs> the, I mean, I'm getting That's what they Dunkers. say on the website. It must be true. Yeah. It's yeah, funny. Yeah, no, I, What's the Pedro I, Jimenez cask? Is that from Spain or Mexico? So that's span. That's Spanish. a span. That's a Spanish sherry cask, uh, right? Course. And that's 
you know, and those are typically finishing casks. The Scots do this all the time, right? But, you know, when you have these low alcohol, you know, a, a sherry cask is 20% alcohol and wine's even lower than that. Right. And so there's a kind of funkiness that can come from this. Like you don't want to spend a lot of time in those barrels. <laughs> And um, honestly, I like so, to eliminate the middleman. And I was going to say I, straight, to be honest. I might yeah. want to. Uh, <laughs> I like. Well, sherry. and I'd be more <laughs> recognizing that sherry is just wine with brandy at it. It's like, just drink the brandy. You know? You're right. Good point. You can simplify things. We do Windows so, uh, Weekly every uh, every uh, Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. I want to wrap it up. So we got to get to Twig here. Yes, Can I just say something real quick? I just I mm. grabbed a drink and I realized this is a, a thing I see in Mexico. I've never seen in the United States, which I think is wonderful. It's a seltzer bottle. Buy. Seltzer bottle, but it has a built-in. Yeah. Yeah. So like, oh, you've seen them. this before. So to me, yeah. like, I've just never seen you actually. I, I'm, I have you've seen them in the this. Three Stooges. Put it down your pants, right. Paul. Do the right thing. Right. Right. Oh, but it's, it's, it's like literally a disposable water dispenser. I used to have that I love it. delivered yeah. to my door in San Francisco. There was a yeah. company called the Seltzer Sisters. They found a bunch, because this is in the oh, 20s, boy. the seltzer guy would come to your door like the milkman and deliver those bottles. Oh, that's, they'd take them back and in. they'd refill them. And so the Seltzer Sisters found a bunch of these old bottles and had a business briefly for of doing oh, I love it. It was wonderful. I, have, I We went through a period where we got milk delivered, you know, as adults, milk which great. was yeah. unusual. But yeah, I've never seen seltzer. <laughs> A seltzer. Oh my God! I it's just the I, I'm just this is might be the height of entitlement. Although they're just it's a well, it's a shame it's box, plastic. Right? Uh, I wish I it were. Oh the no, big, this is thick glass this, bottles with the the metal. Spritzes. Oh yeah, no, this is this is non recyclable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Mexico. It's, it's, and by the, and by the way, Mexico. sherry is a protected name for booze. You know, only Spanish sherry can be called sherry. Oh I yeah, know they that. make sherry here in Australia, but they call it apera. Nice. It's they should call Short it you for know, aperitif. Yeah, yeah, just sell it. You know, sherry with an eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly.